Enable Ireland's YouTube video on learning how to ride a bike. So this video is mainly aimed at children who have developmental coordination disorder, but a wide variety of children can find learning how to ride a bike without stabilizers a little bit challenging, and this method can be great for them too. Now one of the trickiest parts in learning how to ride a bike is the balance part. So we're gonna break the skill of riding a bike down and we're gonna look at that stage first. The balance bike method that I'm gonna show today is an approach that's widely used around the world. Now when you're working with your child through these stages, it's important to just go at your child's pace because it can be a scary experience. So lots and lots of praise and lots and lots of practice. I'm joined here today by my two beautiful assistants. Hi Tim Wally. Hello. And Rebecca. Hi Rebecca. Hi. Now before we get started, I want to talk about helmets because it's essential that your child wears one whilst they're learning. Now lots of children might resist wanting to wear a helmet because they fear being pinched underneath their chin with the strap. So it's important that you get the right size and you wear it correctly. When choosing the right size for a helmet, it's good to go to a bike shop and get measured. It's also good to choose ones which have this rear adjustment system like this or this so that you can get a nice secure fit. I'm going to show you a few examples of how not to wear your helmet. No, way too high on your forehead. It is. Uh, hello, wonky donkey. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay, so when you're putting the helmet on, you want to start with the rear dial nice and loose. So pop your helmet on there, Tamani. And um, we'll get the position right first. So there should be a two finger gap between your forehead and the top of your helmet. Good. Okay, now you can tighten up the rear dial there so it's nice and firm. And now I'm going to ask you to bend over and look between your legs. Good. And the helmet there shouldn't fall off. Okay. Next then we can tighten up those straps. And you can leave them so that there's a gap of about two fingers between your skin and the strap. And sometimes it's worth doing that at home in front of a mirror with your child so that they can see that it's not going to pinch them. So choosing the right bike to learn on can be important too. If your child is still quite small, they may well fit on a 12 inch regular balance bike which you can find in mainstream bike shops. These are bikes which are made without pedals and the geometry of them makes learning that balance section a little bit easier. Now you can also get slightly larger balance bikes in 14, 16 or even adult sizes if you look online. For a lot of children however, they can actually learn how to ride a balance bike by converting their own bike into a balance bike and I'll show you how you do that now. So we want to start by removing the pedal and you just use a 15 millimeter spanner for that and take just the pedal off, just the part where your child's foot sits. So we want to remove those. And then the next thing that we want to do is to bring the seat right down. And when you've aligned it correctly, just make sure that's nice and firmly tight again. You can also make some adjustments to the brake levers so that the position is nice and comfortable for your child's hand. This screw here will alter how far away the brake lever is from your child's fingers and some children like it to be nice and close so that they feel secure. When your child is sitting on their converted balance bike they should have both feet firmly on the ground and a slight bend at the knees as shown. If the seat is still too high, consider using a smaller bike. The size of a bike is measured by the wheel size and written on the tyre wall, for example 14 or 16 or 20 inches. Handlebars should be approximately mid-torso in height. 
So the first stage is just getting comfortable sitting on the bike and feeling the movement of the bike. It might be tempting to hold on to your child or the bike, but it's better to just be close by and support them with your words only and let them feel how the bike moves. You can play a few different games in this position, getting them used to just comfortably sitting on the saddle. So next you want to consider where you want to teach. And outside your house might be the easiest, but if it's full of cracked pavements, um, it's gonna lead to extra challenges there. And a lot of people choose grassy slopes as well. But again, that can have unexpected bumps and it might make falls a little bit softer, but it's also gonna make those falls a little bit more likely. Choose a level, smooth, open space with as few distractions as possible. So our next stage is just to get comfortable with pushing your feet along. It might take some children a while to trust using the seat rather than their feet for weight bearing and they'll want to walk the bike along. As your child gets more used to this stage, we want to be encouraging bum down as much as possible because balance bikes rely on taking weight through the seat and not the feet. If your child needs encouragement with this stage, you can give them a tail. So here we're using a strip of plastic bag and as weight is taken off the seat, it flies away. Uh-oh! When they get more used to keeping their bottom down, you'll notice that the speed can increase. Now it's time to get your chalk out and draw some scary looking fish in a pond on the ground. Next thing we want to ask our child to just push that bike along. And for this you need a little bit more speed because don't let those fish eat your feet. Oh no! Good. So these fish are hungry. Don't let them eat your feet. Ooh, phew. And as your child reaches this stage where they're able to keep their feet up, they're ready for the pedals back on. So when you're putting the pedals back on, there's a right and a left, and that's usually indicated either on this section of the pedal or on this section here. Okay, at this stage, we don't want to be going anywhere, but we've got one pedal back on, and I just want us to practice holding the position where we stay still on the bike for 10 seconds. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Excellent, now we're ready for the next stage. So with the pedal remaining at its lowest position, we're just gonna scoot the other foot along the ground. So as your child gets a bit more confident at this stage, once they're pushing along, they'll be able to hold the other leg up in the air. And at this stage, we're ready for the second pedal. So now with one foot up on the pedal, we're going to start just pushing along like before. And as Rebecca feels ready, she's going to get that other foot up on the pedal and off we go. We are cycling. Woo! Now, once your child is an independent rider, they may want to start with this method. So the foot is on the pedal in its highest position. We do one strong push and off we go. So once your child is pedaling, you're going to need to raise that seat up again so that when your child is sitting on it, just the front of their foot is on the ground only, just the ball of the foot. Some children with coordination difficulties can find getting on and off a bike a little bit tricky. So here's a way to do it with the bike on the floor. So Rebecca's going to step over the crossbar with it still on the floor and then pull it up by its handlebars. Up we go. Ta-da! Well done.